every once in a while you just have one of those days when you look around and you go this is how life ought to be and I think that is within every single one of us somewhere deep in our soul it is crying out that this is how life ought to be it ought to be fun it ought to be adventurous it ought to be exhilarating and exciting and that is what we are chasing after with everything in us is to go out there and find life the way it ought to be I remember growing up and watching different guys that seemed to be going out there and enjoying everything that God had to offer in the wilderness and I just remember thinking when I was a kid I would do anything to get out there and it's become really the quest of my life you know I think all of us are built a little bit differently but if you're watching this you probably have some of the same passions that I do and as I've grown and matured it just takes me farther and farther out into the wilderness and it's given me a deeper appreciation for the complexity of God and the goodness of God and the creativity of God as you see these different landscapes and today what we're gonna do is we're gonna go on a trip that I have been planning for a long time and wanting to accomplish and that is deep into the backcountry of Montana after some big cutthroat trout and we're gonna fly in we're gonna pack up deep into the wilderness and then we are gonna float back out fishing our way out and this was an incredible plan and what's even better than an incredible plan is when an incredible plan comes together better than you could have ever asked or imagined or thought. We're going to back up the plane, buddy. It takes commitment, intentionality, and a ton of work to access the best places on this earth. You don't just whimsically and magically end up at them. You have to be searching them out. You have to be studying the maps, researching, figuring out where these places are, and then figuring out how in the world do we get to them. And then you got to put in the work of actually getting there. Bushwhacking our way down to the creek, like about six miles up the trail. We'll get down here, and pump up our raft. We're there. As we get started in life, it's a lot like a river. It starts small, we don't know a whole lot, and we start going down it, and we start learning as we go and acquiring it. It has to be learned. You don't just drop into life knowing everything. You have to learn, and you have to learn 
oftentimes from people that have been there and done that. And that's one of the coolest things about bringing your children into the things that you're passionate about and exposing them to new things in the world is getting to teach them how to live life and how to live it well and how to be successful in doing it so that they can enjoy it and not be frustrated by it. You gotta get your fishing pole in your hand, Oliver. You're gonna be able to fish while Colton. He can hold you on some good holes. That's a good one. You lose him? No, bring him in. Oh yeah, keep your head the tip up. There you go. Okay, now pull him short. No, 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 just walk, walk on short. Get him up the shore, Ollie. Hold him up so I can see him. No, no, turn sideways. Walk out in the water a little, Scott. Around every bend of the river is a new surprise, but these new things that we encounter, we bring our skills from upriver down into them and we acquire new skills at every hole and we keep going down, succeeding more and more and learning as we go. Okay, bring him towards shore. Bring him towards shore. Go, go, go. Are you serious? What you guys doing? Uh, see you at, see you at the airplane. Whoa, don't leave us, Scotty. Uh you may have spent a lot of time on the river in your life and you may have seen a lot of things, but none of us have seen it all. 
and there's always space to learn a little bit more. The question is, are we willing to learn more as we go down the river? halfway through the day it's about four o'clock and we need to get like four miles down the river I'm trying to fly out by seven tonight so we got a ways to go we got a headwind which actually is surprisingly difficult um we want to catch a few more fish but it's been an incredible day so far oliver and colton are back here getting ready to go we got to get down this rapid behind me here and see if we can't turn up some more good fun as we get out of here we've got like three hours to get down the plane. Water levels are super low this year, so we're scraping rocks all the way along. But it's absolutely incredible out here. I have looked for spots like this my entire life, and this is just one of those special ones for sure. No, we're free! Yes! I'm free! Yes! Go, you can! Free go, free go! Oh yeah! Best line pickers ever! They seem to be feeding farther down. The reality is, is it takes a lot of miles of river to get good. It takes a lot of casts, it takes a lot of failure, it takes a lot of lost fish. Oh, nice! And it just takes that time and consistent discipline and focus to really accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Nothing good comes quick or easy on the river or in life. Dude, this hole is amazing. Oh, got one. No. Little guy. That's not that little, Stolly. What? Nice cast, dude. You're getting way good. Oh, go over, hold it. 
Hey, go ahead, Ollie. Catch a good one. Sometimes the way you're fishing just isn't working. Sometimes the hole is just fished out and you gotta know when to go down to the next hole and just follow the river and see what else it has for you. Not all rivers are created equal. The river you're on and the skills you have, the stick to the understanding you have of how to navigate that river makes all the difference in the world. Oh, this is a sucker. Or a white fish. I caught like a 19 or 20 inch cutthroat right here. If you asked me what the perfect river was, I would say there is no such thing. But this right here is how it ought to be. I can see better. There we go. Boy! 
Good one, Scott. Oh my gosh. I watched that thing come up out of the depths. It just got done eating a giant squid. Woo! Dude, this thing is a tankosaurus. Nah. Ready? Yeah. Uh, days like this just make you realize how good this world really is. Like we get so caught up in being in the city and being caught up in the hubbub of everything. And I know I say it all the time, but Jesus went out into the wilderness all the time. And it's when you get out here that man hasn't totally decimated everything and tamed it. Like you get to see the raw, untouched beauty of God's handiwork. And for me, I don't know if that resonates with you, but for me, it's just like I feel closer to God when I'm in the mountains because I'm not distracted by everything. And these days right here with my boys and my brother, you float in these rivers and just how life ought to be. I think there's something deep in our souls that understands that life ought to be a certain way. It ought to be good. It ought to be rich. It ought to be full. It ought to be just exhilarating and exciting. And somewhere along the line, it's not that way. And I remember for me, there were times in my life where I thought like, just chasing after everything I possibly could was gonna make me happy. And it wasn't until I surrendered my life to Jesus, put my faith in him and started following after him with everything I had, that I actually started to enjoy life the way I believe that life is supposed to be enjoyed. And I know inside you right now, if you're listening, I know inside you, there is something saying that life ought to be better. Life ought to be different. Life ought to be and can be like this. And I'm telling you right now, Jesus came to give life and to give it abundantly. He's not a liar. When he, he calls you, he calls you to be his disciple. That means you will learn from him. He, he knows how to live life better than absolutely anybody that's ever walked this earth. And if you wanna live life well, if you wanna live life fully, if you wanna live life in God's presence where there is fullness of joy, you have gotta follow Jesus. And we wanna help you do that. If you know deep down inside something's missing, we wanna help you find that because I know what it is. I know it's Jesus. And I know maybe you've even tried church before, but what you need is you need discipleship. You need to learn, you need to grow. You need to actually learn from Jesus and men that are actually walking powerfully and practically with Jesus in a way that radically changes and empowers their life. And so I wanna invite you to go over to our website, www limitlesshunting.com. Go over there. We have a resource that we wrote called The First Mile. You can go through it on your own. You can go through it with a friend. Uh, we even have groups. We have leaders that we've been training up so you can go on Zoom. Uh, it's seven weeks, one hour a week. And you can go on Zoom and sit with other guys that are farther ahead than you in their walk. And they will teach you everything that they can about walking with Jesus and getting connected and living the life that Jesus promises. The life that you were destined for, that you were built for, that God, he, he created you for this fullness of life with him. So go over to our website, The First Mile. It's absolutely free. We pay for the shipping, everything. We have it digital. We have these groups. Go over there. There's no excuse for you not to go out there and grab a hold of the life that God offers you. You got to surrender your life to Jesus. But as soon as you do that and you start following him and learning from him, he's going to take you to places. It may not be easy, but he's going to take you to places that you can't even imagine in your wildest dreams. <laughs>